That'd be the 40,000 impacts per minute. You got the turbo, obviously, just the fastest, most powerful hammer drill on the market. And that is why I am making this video. All right, so I just want to point out that this is not a YouTube influencer. This is an actual company. A bit, this is actually a big time company making this video. All right, and so based on that, they should not have done this test video like they did. This should have been 100% professional, should have been 100% accurate on their claims, and this should not have been modified or uh, doctored in any way, shape, or form because this is real people's money. If you're making a claim like that, fastest, most powerful hammer drill on the market, then you better back that up. All right, so that's why I made this video because I, I want to do this video based on that claim alone. And we're also gonna go through all the other stuff as well. Let's say the Flex is the most powerful hammer drill on the market because it beat this. This isn't even close to being the best hammer drill on the market. I've told my Milwaukee rep, and I've said in many videos, Milwaukee needs to upgrade this because this is actually a weak hammer drill. The Hilti destroyed the Milwaukee hammer drill and the DeWalt Power Detect destroyed the Hilti hammer drill. To make this claim accurate, they need to use the DeWalt Power Detect to make that claim. I'll play it for you again. Got to be the 40,000 impacts per minute. You got the turbo, obviously, just the fastest, most powerful hammer drill on the market. Welcome to the Flex Face Off. All right, so as you, as you can see there, both of them are using two amp hour batteries. All right, so the, the, oper the flex operator was majorly pushing in, into the wood. Majorly, not just a little, majorly. And the person that was operating the Milwaukee tool was letting it spin and ha have it feed itself in when it's not a self-feeding, uh, self-driving spade bit. All right, the, this type of bit, you need to push it in because it is not self-driving. That is why I use self-driving spade bits because that, that's, the tool takes over 100% as soon as you pull the trigger. This requires you to push down. And as you can see with the wood flying, he pushed down a lot, he pushed in a lot harder than the Milwaukee did. So that right there is doctored. And as you can see, it barely won. Even with them, even with them modifying their position and pushing it in, it barely won. All right, so that's two amp, two amp hour versus two amp hour. If you thought that was impressive on the part of Flex, wait until you see our turbo version of that drill. All right, so that right there, that, that has a turbo button. Does the Milwaukee have a turbo button? No, but the Flex does. Since uh, Flex has an advantage over the Milwaukee and they brag about it, there is zero reason why they can't use a high uh, output battery during this test. I've already proven in many videos that uh, that this three amp hour high output battery would destroy the Milwaukee five amp hour battery. Uh, it it blow it out of the water. There's no contest because it's not uh, Milwaukee's fault that Flex doesn't have a 21700 cell battery. That's not Milwaukee's fault at all. So that is handicapping the competitor because the competitor has an option uh, that Flex doesn't, and Flex has an option Milwaukee doesn't, and they're bragging about it. But meanwhile, the Milwaukee's handicapped. Got to be the 40,000 impacts per minute. You got the turbo, obviously, just the fastest, most powerful hammer drill on the market.
Tell me about that fight. How'd it go for you? Smooth. You really feel the drill doing the work. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on it. Hands down, a clear winner. Hands down, yeah. That's got to be the 40,000 impacts per minute. You got the turbo, obviously. Just the fastest, most powerful hammer drill on the market. And the impact driver's going to get the job done, especially this bad boy right here. We're talking about the Flex 24 volt quarter inch hex impact driver. 24 volt sensor free brushless motor inside provides 1,800 inch pounds of torque at 3,400 RPMs. And with all that going on, we made it in a compact design because that's what the job site pro told us they wanted in the tool. So we're going to be putting the flex against the most popular impact driver on the job site today. We're going to be driving an eight inch self-drilling screw into a 12 by 12 beams. I have 12 volt tools that could drive these in. So let's see what happens. This test is not stressful enough for a real test. I use eight inch screws too. That is just the beginning to warm the tool up, to get it ready for the, the actual real hardcore test that separates the big boys from the small boys. I had situations to where the Ryobi P238 beat this impact driver. Ryobi in certain uh, uh, screws beat this impact driver because no tool operates the exact same every single time. Overall, this impact driver destroyed the Ryobi but the Ryobi did beat a couple of tasks here and there. This, so this doesn't prove anything. What'd you think about the power, Joe? Amazing power. Is there a clear winner? Winner, winner, right here, flex tool all the way. Really? And when it comes to this reciprocating saw, if you're if you're making if you're making a big huge impression and you want to seriously impress people, you do not use your best tool and compare it to Milwaukee's mid-range tool. This should have been against the super sawzall because this is this is number one. And if you would have made, even if you lost, and that's the problem, it's okay if you lose. People just get to see what the difference is because they're not going to turn down your line of tools because you lost the most powerful reciprocating saw on the market. This should have been against the uh, super sawzall. Playing of the pipe on the floor tells me the demo's done, but who won? Flex as usual. The last thing I want to talk about is this guy operating the Flex angle grinder. Now, this made me cringe. He wanted this to win so bad, he put so much pressure on that wheel, it was dangerous. All you need to do is that wheel for it to break and it's going to go inside you. He almost lost control of the tool from all the pressure he was putting on it because he wanted it to win. He made sure it was going to win and the guy that was operating the Milwaukee angle grinder was operating it exactly the way it was supposed to. Take a look at all the sparks that are coming from the flex. He slips. Like, and the other guy is doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing with an angle grinder. So whoever operated that angle grinder 
you need to operate that tool a lot more safely. How did it all go? I was at prior, say twice as fast, easily. Really? And that's, a, that's not because it's cutting into it faster. Angle grinders don't really cut into stuff faster. Pressure does. But like this is insane on how much sparks are coming out of that. That is pressure. And he lo almost loses control of the wheel. I can't wait to buy some, test them out, you know, because it, it's, it's more content for me. So I am going to get into the flex line. The, the, I love the color coordination. I love the design, especially love the battery level indicator. It's on the side of the tool. It's bright. I, I, I'm going to assume they, it stays lit for a while, but I think that is really cool. The batteries are a real cool design and I can't wait to buy some of these. All right, but I just wanted to point this, this specific uh, video out because this is completely circumstantial and it's, they uh, they did this in a way to make sure that Flex wins every single time. And it did every single time. These aren't really good tests. They're really not. So I just wanted to give you guys this information. So if you found this video helpful and entertaining, please like this video. Please hit the bell button to be notified of future videos. And please subscribe to the channel. This is Dave Nicholas. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time.